Long, long ago, people came up with the idea that it's cool to have a lot of stuff. The more possessions you have, the better. But one person can only make so much stuff, so people started exchanging with each other to get even more. Finally, people decided to have a universal exchange medium. Rocks, gold, slaves, papers, beads. They called it money, in a word. People got richer every day, and everything would have been fine, but they had to keep their loot somewhere so no one could steal it. Some smart guys worked out they could profit from this, so they went to the rich people and said, Hey, daddios, we'll keep your money safe in exchange for a small payment. And cross our hearts, it'll be totally secure in our bank. Yeah. People thought it was brilliant, and the herd instinct began. Everyone brought all their money to the bank guys, who gradually became suntan pigs with big power. Afterwards, they wanted to get even more profit, so their fees shot up. This is how the world economy was established. Now everything was under control. Fuck knows whose control it was, but everyone had to deal with it. But then one day, a noble dude named Satoshi Nakamoto got really fed up with the banks holding his money hostage and charging stupid fees on every step. He used his enormous intelligence and BAM! Introduced an entire financial system based on a super code which allows for transferring and storing money without any banks, commissions and other bullshit. No one could get their dirty hands on anyone's savings now. Satoshi called this wonder Flibberty McGibbet, but then he changed his mind and named it Bitcoin. This ultra network is decentralized, which means none of the aforementioned swine could get their dirty hands on it, and all transactions were done directly between two computers, making them untraceable by banks. But how are bitcoins created and who gets them? Satoshi thought this through as well. New bitcoins are mined, but not using a pickaxe with a computer, and not from a cave, from a super server. At first, everyone was skeptical. How can this be money if you can't wipe your ass with it? Is it supported by gold or something? People laughed until Satoshi found millions of supporters who also agreed to exchange Bitcoin for goods and services. One dude even bought a pizza for 10,000 Bitcoins. But then 10,000 Bitcoins turned out to be worth $10 million. So he had to hang himself. But that's another story. Those who used Bitcoins knew the future had arrived. The Bitcoin community grew stronger and stronger, uniting into mining pools like ghash.io so they could generate more Bitcoins together, and establishing cool trading places like cex.io, where people could easily exchange Bitcoins for other money. Bitcoin grew more and more popular. No wonder! It's easy, accessible and profitable. You get to shop without bank fees, transfer money all around the world within seconds and no cost, and it's 100% confidential, which means there's no accountability. And what a gang cex.io gathered! Everyone was happy. Some were mining and getting bonus bonuses in cryptocurrencies, some trading, others enjoying new friendships. A veritable feast of friends. The people were free and the banks were left sucking their thumbs. Bitcoin-oriented guys became superstars. All the girls were going crazy about them. Are you still swerving away from Bitcoins? What a loser! Come on, stop it! CEX.io awaits.